how hard they played. I thought there was a stretch in the second half where where uh, Harvard started to play a little bit harder than us, and we called a timeout and, and uh, regrouped. And once again, Chris did just a great job playing within himself, making veteran plays, and, and you know he's an automatic double double. And then Brian, you know, I, I encourage him to shoot the ball. He passes up shots. At times, I don't think he realizes how good a shooter he is. And, uh, and uh, at the same time, you know, he's strong enough, to, uh, even as a freshman, to be able to put it on the ground and keep people honest. So, uh, Kervin Bristol did a good job defensively. You know, uh, he's right to a hell of a player. And, uh, and we were concerned about that. And, and we were really concerned about them shooting the ball from, from the three point line. But we knew we had to make them do that. And, and uh, I think for the most part, they took a contested shot. So, Hey, it's uh, it's fun. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's fun coaching this team. They're fun. They they're into it. They're they're into uh, some of the changes, the subtle changes we make in the course of what we do with the zones. And I uh, think we're having some fun with it. It's an NBA week. You know, we play tonight and uh, after Georgia Tech last uh, last week, and, and, and now we go tonight, and then we go Thursday, and then we go Saturday. So. Our practices will be like NBA walkthroughs. We'll probably go for about an hour each day. And, uh, and you know, we're allowed to celebrate till midnight. And then we start getting ready for, uh, I'll start watching some UMass tape at home tonight or tomorrow morning early. So I'm very proud of Tommy, there are wins, and then there are big wins like the Tech game and a ranked team tonight. What does that do for the program? Like this is what my vision of this was. This is why I came. And you know, this was Chris's vision. That's why he stayed. You know, everybody in the world was telling him to leave, and he was loyal to Fordham, and he stayed. And Brian Smith had a lot of opportunities to go to a lot of places. You know, it was like selling futures in the stock market. I was telling Brian how good we're going to be. You know, and you're going to be part of it. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of layers to this. And and, uh, and then the first thing I told him in the locker room, right, about Cologne. Little bits, okay. Too much is tacky, and if you're drinking, it's poison. Success is the same thing. So they got to keep level their heads level. And I thought they did a very good job. Someone asked me before the game, our, our uh, FUV radio guys asked me, you know, have they been uh, wallowing in the wind over Georgia Tech? And I said, to be quite honest, no. They 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 seem to be very mature going into this game about the way they're doing business. And I said, but I won't know till the ball goes up because that's what happens with a young team. So, uh, obviously, and this place is special, man. You know, and, I, and I've said this all along. You know, you see this beautiful room we're in, the hallway, the Hall of Fame on the wall there, all the great players, and then our offices and the locker room, everything around here, the weight room, the training room, there's upgrades. And this place is a pit. And it can be for us what, what Cameron is for Duke. You know, they have the smallest oldest gym in the ACC, but it's the toughest place to play, and kids still go there to play. So uh, a night like Georgia Tech, and then a night like this, and now Xavier Saturday, the place is going to be packed. And this is without the students here. So uh, if we're lucky enough to find a way to win a couple more, the students will be even more engaged, and, and that'll make it that much more special. Chris, what does it mean to, to you guys, especially you who've been here the longest, to, to be a ranked team now? Man, I'm ecstatic, man. I'm at a loss of words. Like, I was very confident coming into the game, but actually beating them, like, it's like a dream come true. And I'm, I'm really happy to be here. I'm happy that me and my teammates got to get this big win, and um, we're just going to keep going from here. Coach, knowing how well Harvard shoots the ball from down there, 35% of the team coming in. Would you uh, stress to the team as far as zone defense principles coming in? Well, we just changed the zone. You know, we weren't going to start playing man-to-man. -man. We're going to be a zone team, and, and uh, that's the commitment we've made. And I thought we did a good job controlling tempo with it. The score was where we wanted it to be. Uh, and then in the zone, we just, you know, there were a couple more there were a couple more points of emphasis in the sense of extending the zone on shooters and locating shooters in the zone. and, and uh, you know, at times it was basically man to man, depending on where the ball is in the floor. I can't go into everything we do, but you know, there, there's a bunch of guys. I worked for great coaches. They were great zone coach, Bob McKillop, you know, uh, Rolly Massimino was incredible. I talked to him a couple times a week, you know, all the time, and, and, and we talk about the zone. He used to call it one to double. So there, there's a lot of things we're doing, and they're having fun. That's the cool thing. They're engaged in it. And they're like, all right, yeah, we're, we're going to do this. And, 
and they're executing the game plan, which is what we weren't able to do early in the season. But our maturity now and the amount of minutes they're getting, Brian, Fatty, Jeff Short, Brandon, you know, I thought Alberto Westwood gave us great minutes in the first half. But I thought that Jeff Short would extend the defense a little more with the shooting range, and that would allow us to get Chris post ups. And they had to really extend out on Jeff, so we ran some post ups to that side of the floor, knowing that they wouldn't leave him because they've seen him make, even though we didn't make a shot tonight, you know, his reputation uh, created space on the floor. So uh, it's good, man. It's all good, as the kids say. Uh, Brian, at uh, Madison Square Garden, you took a good shot to try to tie the game it was so long, and now you got. It's almost like take two, you get a shot here in the corner and you drill it. What's that feeling like drilling in the corner when you know you're, you're a big shot type of guy? It feels good. I know I wasn't like, I didn't understand. I didn't realize how far I was at last week on it. But then I had another chance to hit the big shot. So I took my time to make it. You were feeling it in the second half. Uh, you just shooting in practice, getting uh, much more reps and feel more comfortable in the offense? Yeah, taking extra shots before practice and after practice helps a lot. Coach, uh, the three and a half minute mark, there was a lock that was against you guys that could have easily been for the goaltender and Harvey got a quick three to uh, tie the game before the timeout. What did you say during that timeout that got you guys to finish the game at 10 4 1? I can't tell you what I said to the ref about the block. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think it's a good call. I don't think the ball got above the rim. But, uh, and I thought the crew that this referee crew did a wonderful job of controlling a tough game for ref. Uh, you know, uh, there's no magic, man. You know, I mean, we do all our work as coaches leading into the game. You make some adjustments and you, you get a feel for what it's going on. I kept talking to them about it, just about a stop and a run. A stop and a run. We need one more run and then we can hold the ball and play time and score. And that's something we talk about in practice all the time. We wanted to continue to run, get the ball in the post and attack offensively inside out. And I thought, I thought the big guys did a great job feeding Chris in the high post. It's the first game we've really gotten a lot of high lows. And, uh, and that's another part of our arsenal now that's, that's good and it's important. So, uh, and Chris is making free throws. So in, in the past, people would just foul him and, and send him to the foul line, you know, give up one instead of two. But he's become a, a, a whole different player now because of his ability to make free throws. Uh, Chris, in, in the first half, it seemed like uh, you were a little bit out of it. The team wasn't communicating that much on the zone. Then the second half, the, the whole crowd got into it. You started getting into it, getting the crowd into it. You know, uh, what did you guys? What did you guys change? What did you do? Um, I changed my shoes. <laughs> my feet. <laughs> my feet. I'm serious. My feet were killing me in the first half. Like I had problems with like my right shoe, and then like I changed my shoes in, in the second half, and like I just felt more loose and like I felt like more capable to do things. And uh, I can see the headline now. <laughs> <laughs> I like um, I was being a leader basically uh, and talking a whole bunch and uh, bringing people in like during huddles during like uh, during timeouts and stuff like bringing my teammates in. We were talking, we were communicating way more, and um, basically it just just played a whole lot harder. Very physical, stuck in the big guys. Just played played within myself like coach says, and uh, came up with the big win. Brian, how did you feed off the crowd? atmosphere tonight to continue to shoot well in both halves? Knowing that the crowd was in it and I was making shots is a good feeling so I just kept shooting it and kept going in. When Brian passed up one at about the six minute mark in the corner and then he did the double clutch and the second one he missed and I said coming off the court, I think it was during the four minute timeout, I said don't hesitate man, you know you can make shots with people in your face, don't, don't ever hesitate, he's got a green light, I trust him, you know he's not going to take bad shots. Brian, do you think you'll need less encouragement now to take shots after tonight? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to take every shot. I'm going to try to take open shots, not four shots, bad shots, mm -hmm. bad for the team. When you, when you left go of that shot, though, did you feel like it was going in, a big shot at the end? I was confident. I left my hands real good. I felt Whoa. confident I was going to <laughs> <laughs> You know, Brian, when I recruited him, you know, he had the reputation. He had scored 68 in the high school game, and we had seen him play as a junior a little bit. But he's one of those guys when he misses, it looks good. So you know he's a good shooter. It's always on the heel of the rim. You know, he's got great mechanics. It's similar to a baseball player having a very good compact swing or a golfer. So there's very little room for error in his in his mechanics. And uh, and that's one of the reasons why he's such a good shooter. And he's got great legs. You know, he, remi I, he reminds me of Charles Jenkins in that sense. 
of as a freshman he was powerful enough to still shoot the ball at great range because it comes from the waist down when you, when you elevate and you can knock down shots. Coach. Yes. Coach, going into the uh, Atlantic 10 tournament, I know the Atlantic 10 this year, especially, such a tough conference. Uh, how, did you, how do you think you guys stack up against some of your opponents? That yeah, well, look, I mean, I'm dumb enough to think we were going to win the Atlantic 10 every game last year. So I'm not going to change on that, you know. It was funny, Tommy and I, Yannick and I were talking about it before the game. And, you know, uh, unless you're in it, you know, it's, it, you really can't. It's hard, to, like, I, really, I celebrate till midnight. And then you start getting ready for the next game, and then at the end of the year you look back on your season. But it's a, it's a very very good basketball league, and uh, you know we just have to stay the course and continue to play at a high level. If we if we play a little bit less than we did tonight, we're not going to win games in our conference. It's that good. But we have talent, so I think we're going to be okay. But did, every, I got a couple questions this week. What's the difference? Last year you had six wins at this time. And what well, the difference is we have more depth and we have more talent. And knock on wood, last year, Brandon Butler got hurt and had to play the whole year hurt. And then Marvin Dominique got hurt and wasn't able to play. So uh, I think that's a big difference for us. Uh, Coach, what's the confidence like? You lost Manhattan and Monmouth and it seemed like things were going down and now everything's up, players are playing with other confidence. Are you guys all confident ball club right now? Yeah, very much so, without a doubt. And, you know, that's a learning experience. I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't going into those games planning on losing, but I knew we could. And I, you know, I just knew that we weren't where we, we could have been yet. There were some things we really needed to work on, and, and you know, sometimes that uh, you respond to that, you know, and we did. For any of you guys, it's been 34 years since Fordham beat a ranked team. So what is just doing that tonight kind of mean to you guys? It's a good feeling. It's history made. You know that's really part of it. Mm -hmm. I've never been on any team, so I'm hyped. No <laughs> I mean, that's what I, I always think, and I don't want to, look, I love it. It's great from me, my family, and all of those things, but I think about fans and Chris and Alberto and Ryan Hage, who went through two and three win seasons, and the fans here who have struggled, and the alumni and the, the administration, and the people who I sat down with when I decided to make this move and come here. Part of it was because I felt I didn't feel sorry for him, but I was like, this, well, maybe I did, I don't know. It was just like, this, this is a great challenge. And it was a good time for me to come here. And the only way you get it done is with players. There's no magic. There's nobody, you know, the best coaches in the world, and you give them a team that doesn't have good players, and they're not winning basketball games. So you've got to have players. I'm smart enough to know that. And, and I, that's what I think of. I think about Father McShane. I think about all of the alumni that have been wonderful to me, the people who've been here, the people who helped build this room and build this lobby and our offices and allow us to take charter flights and the people that are involved in this program. And they're all in. There's no hesitation. They're all in. And, and they want something special here. And tonight's part of it. It's not the end all. It's a long way from it. But we're moving in the right direction, I think. Chris? I apologize if the BRD answered this, but what do you guys see that was so effective against Ray? Right. Right. right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I just think that we tried to play him one on one in the post and we didn't allow any kick outs. You know, and I think he's very good at reposting. He catches, he kicks out, he reposts and gets on the second one. So what we tried to do was just stay out on their shooters because they're such good shooters. I mean, uh Rivard's just a tremendous shooter. We got lucky the way he shot the ball tonight. He got some great looks that he never I saw him in prep school and we were <laughs> We had just signed the contract to play Harvard for four years, and, and, and it's a wonderful game for Fordham to play. But I went to a prep school game, and Rivard had like 10 threes, and I was like, where's he going? They said, Harvard. I said, oh, shit. <laughs> you know, I'm going to see this kid for the next four years, but I mean, we got lucky tonight that, that, that he, uh, he didn't shoot the ball great. And I think our defense had something to do with it. For the most part, we had a hand in his face. Chris, you, you and Alberto both said yesterday you believed you could win this game. What did you tell to Brian and Fatty and Brandon and the younger players to say, look, we can beat a top 25 team? Yeah, it just, we were very confident, and we had a good uh, walkthrough today. Um, everybody was just really happy to just be on walkthrough, and uh, we were just going through all the plays and stuff. And uh, just th during the course of the day, everybody was really focused, like in the room, just focusing on the game. And like uh, when we got here, we were taking like shots, and everybody was like talking to each other, communicating during the layup lines. and. Uh, I mean, when we brought it in, that was our main thing, like win on three. That was our thing. Uh, and Kervin and I were like talking to everybody, just making sure everybody was on the same page, everybody knew the goals. 
and uh, everybody was on the same page, and everybody was. And that, that's part of the maturation process of a team. You know, so often people look what happens on the floor. It's getting ready to play games like this. It's getting ready to practice hard every day. You know, and that's what these young guys are doing now. And in the beginning of the year, I was pulling teeth every day, and I kept telling them, if I'm coaching effort, we're not going to be very good. But well, right now, we're at a place where everybody's playing pretty darn hard. I mean, a lot of people whose opinion I respect grabbed me after the game and were like, man, your team, most kids really played hard. And that's the greatest compliment a coach can have in my opinion. Chris, when you're, jump, when you're jumping up and down in the after the game, what are you, what are you thinking to yourself? I'm, not, I'm happy. <laughs> we just beat a top 25 team. I'm happy. I'm excited. It's a great win for the, the, the program and the fans, everybody that came and supported us. My teammates, that's what's going through my head. I threw the ball up just because I was happy. That's why I threw it up. And um, that's why I was jumping. And that's never happened. I never I never been a part of that. I mean, I don't have no other reaction to that. But that's so um, that's what I was feeling on the inside and that's just how I felt. Leave the jump and just scream and be happy. Great, thanks guys. Good. Thank you all very much. We appreciate it.